early in the day like this, it's good to stop and ask yourself, what are your resolves for the day? Remembering that right resolve is part of the path. When the Buddha talks about discernment, it's not simply a matter of seeing things as they are or holding to right views. It also involves realizing that you're going to have to act on your views. And you want to act in a way that is in line with what the views have to tell you. That's what right resolve is for, because the right view tells you that the reason you're suffering is not because of people outside or conditions outside, no matter how bad they may be. It's because something the mind is doing right now. So we're going to look at your thoughts and see where are your thoughts unskillful. You want to bring some order to your thoughts so that they head in the right direction. The Buddha gets three big categories. Being resolved on renunciation. In other words, you're not going to spend your time thinking about nice sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations. You're not going to sit here thinking about how much you'd like to have the weather change or this or that kind of food. Resolve on non-ill will. In other words, having goodwill for the people around you. If goodwill is hard, have equanimity. And the resolve on harmlessness. That basically comes down to compassion. You see people are suffering and you don't pile on. You try to figure out some way that you can help them. So what are you resolved on today? It's good to start the day with a clear idea of what you want to do. The renunciation is not just keeping control of your thoughts, but getting the mind into concentration. After all, as the Buddha said, when you establish mindfulness rightly, your mind doesn't go wandering off into thoughts of sensuality. Like that story of the quail. If the quail had stayed in the field, the hawk wouldn't have been able to catch it, but the quail started wandering off into other areas. And that's how it got caught. So if you're really going to be mindful, you don't go wandering into sensuality. And when the mind is secluded from sensuality, it's going to settle down, get into concentration. That, of course, is our primary reason for being here, right? why we have a monastery where people can meditate. But also remember, you want to be resolved on non-ill will and harmlessness, too. Of course, when you're meditating, you're not causing anybody harm. You're not showing ill will for anybody. You're actually showing a lot of good will for yourself and the people around you. But don't think only in terms of the meditation. Think of your engagement with other people as you go through the day. The resolve that you're going to treat people with no ill will, you're going to treat people in a harmless way. And that's how your mind stays on the path. So the path is not something you do only when you sit here with your eyes closed or you do walking meditation. It's in all of your engagement with everybody. As Jean Fung used to say, we divide our day up into times. There's time to eat, time to talk, time to work, time to whatever. And the practice gets shoved off into little times as well. But if you think of the practice as something you're doing all the time, then it becomes timeless, a kaliko, as we chant. And that's when it becomes strong, builds up momentum, and actually can make a difference in your mind.